What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. In this video, we are jumping into something brand new. This is Tiger Division issue number one. The defenders of South Korea are finally taking center stage with their first solo series. We are going to learn much more about individuals like Taiyuki, arguably one of the most powerful individuals to hit the stage in a long time, having a power set that is on par with Sin and Blue Marvel. This guy is pretty much Marvel Comics South Korean Superman. We have Lady Bright, who is a sorceress, Mr. Enigma, a street brawling demigod, the General, Gunner 2, and of course, one of my favorites, White Fox. But that's not to forget that Luna Snow is also going to be part of this team. Now, if you have no idea who these characters are, this is a great point to jump in, because you are going to learn who they are, and we're we're really going to get some more backstory into who these characters are, where they come from, and what they are truly capable of. So make sure you guys have subscribed to the channel, make sure you like this video, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so this story is starting us off in South Korea. There appears to be some kind of cruise ship or giant vessel that is making its way directly towards land. That is where Tiger Division comes into play. Play. With us getting our introductions, we start with Luna Snow, a South Korean pop star, but also superhero. Using her powers of ice, she uses this to put out a ton of flames, calling in back up to everybody because this is about to get dangerous. That is where we see Lady Bright coming in on her card, being a sorcerer, card dealer, wise way beyond her years. Saving this kid's life, we also see Mr. Enigma. A demigod by day, a party god by night. Having a whole slew of powers, one of those is being able to persuade the currents of the water. And then we have the general, a supernatural totem with a big laugh and a bigger heart. Gunner 2, pretty much an android with an attitude. And while our members of Tiger Division, they're out here, they're able to get all the people to safety. They still cannot stop this boat from making landfall. If it does make landfall, the damage is going to be catastrophic. That is when we see the one and only Taiyaki, our South Korean Superman, come swooping in. And he is able to stop the boat with simply his body alone. With everybody safe, with the boat being stopped, Tiger Division has saved the day. But with all the congratulations, all the bowing, everything going on, everybody being very appreciative of what Tiger Division has just done. This is when Taiyaki sees something. He sees his mother appearing to him as if she is some kind of ghost. She lets him know that he has been keeping a secret, that he has hidden his true self. All of these years, she has watched him be a hero, watched him save people, repent for the sins of his past. But until he is truthful with who he is and where where he comes from. She says that he will always be shackled to the past. With her giving this warning, we see her disappear. Taiyaki aka Taiwan, he finds himself frozen stiff, not knowing what to say, what to do. But when she is gone, he can find that deep sadness inside of him, not even really getting to talk to his mother. She disappeared in an instant. And that is what takes us to a little bit later on at Tiger Division HQ. White Fox has called everybody back for a meeting. White Fox being in charge of Tiger Division. She lets all of them know that they have a situation at hand. Someone broke into a government storage unit. Whatever was inside of it, it was dangerous and it was rare artifacts. Something had been taken and they need to go learn exactly what is going on. What had been stolen is what is known as the Psylocke Gym. Not telling them what it is or what it does. It is simply their job to retrieve it. That is when the general said Says, why don't we just follow the footprints? Now, no one else is able to see these footprints but the general. They put off some kind of energy that no one else is able to see, but conveniently 
having a path to go on. We see that Taiyaki has really been out of it. Ever since his mother came to him, he has been just spacing out, letting the others take charge and simply call him when they are ready. He is continuously seeing his mother everywhere. This is really beating him up. He doesn't know what is going on, but he goes back home, opening up a very old box. This is where we see a flag, holding up this tattered, beaten South Korean flag. We are taken to 1950, the start of the Korean War. As a tank moves through the village, these North Korean troops are making their way through. That is when a South Korean soldier pops out, and he starts taking his shots. The North Korean soldiers wasting no time, opening up with the main gun from the tank. This is an absolute bloodbath for anybody in their way, civilian and soldier alike. That is where we see a woman running from all of the chaos. But in the destruction, this woman had lost her life and her infant child left lying there on the ground. The soldiers move out. Day turns into night. As a young woman goes looking around for her brother, her brother's name being Taiwan, she finds this baby infant. Not sure where her brother is, she picks up this baby and wraps the baby inside of a South Korean flag. The same flag that Taiyaki is currently carrying with him. The one he keeps hidden away in that box. A memory from his past. Because the woman he has been seeing is the same woman that rescued him. This is not his biological mother, but adopted mother. When the war started, she saved his life. As we take this trip down memory lane, he gets a phone call. Tiger Division has the location of the individuals that stole that gym. And so, flying off, he meets up with them at the warehouse. Opening up the door, our heroes go inside. But as soon as they go inside, they get completely completely surrounded. Whoever did this, they set up a trap. They knew Tiger Division would come, and this is where the fight begins. Alright gang, so we are picking up at a warehouse on the outskirts of Seoul. We have Ty, we have Lady Bright, Gunner 2, Mr. Ignema, Luna Snow, the General. They are all here. They are all fighting with a great fury. With the team being ambushed, they are hitting as hard as they can. But what we see is that they are focusing on Ty, what could be considered the South Korean Superman. All of these individuals that ambushed them, every single one of them focus on Ty. They jump on him. A giant dog pile. We see the general go and try and save him. Only for the general to take a rocket to the back as this drops him down to his knees. Ty has finally had enough. He breaks free of every single one of these guys that has hold of him. He goes directly for the individual that just hit the general, smashing this guy into one of the supporting beams. The very foundation of this building starts to crack, with Ty giving the evacuation, letting all of Tiger Division know that they gotta get out of here and they have to do it now, making their escape in a fiery explosion. The team heads back to Tiger Division HQ, repairing the general. Luckily, he's not a human. He is a mystical totem. This means that he doesn't have organs, he just amassed energy. It'll take some time for him to recover, but he's gonna be alright. Now the team is trying to figure out what the heck that was all about. They definitely recognize that all of the goons, they were focused on Ty for some reason. They were attacking him, but not in a lethal manner. They weren't trying to kill him, they were trying to capture him. As Gunner goes in to do some investigation into the technology that they had, robot to robot, he is able to break down that the material they used, it was all custom made by the MTO Corporation. One of the biggest conglomerates in all of South Korea. Now the question is, why is this corporation making killer suits? This is when Gunner comes across a project in their database that is labeled Project Cal Duo. When Ty hears this, it triggers a memory. That is what takes us back to 1957. 
when Ty was just a young boy as he runs around the market, kind of directionless, not really having anything going on for him or his family, being very poor, being very hungry. This is where he meets another young boy. The two of them together, they go and they steal some noodles. They grab these noodles and they run as fast as they can. We learn that this boy's name is Min Jae. This is Ty's first real experience with doing crime, with being a criminal. And though morally, he's not sure if this is right, Min is able to convince him that this is a good way to go. That the two of them together, they can be a dynamic duo, a two-man team. The two of them now referring to themselves as the Cal Duo. This is where we jump to 1966. Some years later, the boys have gotten older, but these two are as thick as thieves. Being able to scam a local store out of some money. When the store owner figures this out, he goes chasing after them, only to find himself in an alleyway with a bunch of other young individuals. Because the Cal Duo, they have created their own little gang with them being able to run off the store owner. This is definitely not the first time that they have done this, but Min is now trying to say that he wants to go for something bigger. Now that they have all of these kids, all of them looking for some kind of purpose, he believes that they can give all of these kids exactly that, and they can make something for themselves. And while Ty is not sure about this, he continues to go about it anyway. With Ty returning home that evening, going to his mother, she sees the blood on his shirt. She knows the things that he has been doing, the activities he has found himself in, and she gives him an ultimatum that he needs to quit his crimes while he is ahead. He needs to go back to school or he will no longer be welcome in this home. Giving him this choice, he says fine that he will make a choice and he chooses his future. That is what takes us to present day. Outside the headquarters of MTO Corporation, Ty is going in to investigate. With all of this connecting to his past, he has to see what this is. Going in from the rooftop, he gets into a room where he finds some kind of machine. What was mysterious has just turned ominous. But he also believes that he has seen this before. That is when a voice from behind him lets him know that he used the roof access point. Simple but predictable. Saying that their algorithm had said there was a 92% chance that is the route that he would have taken. As this man steps out of the shadows, we see that this is his childhood friend. This is Min. Letting Ty know that he has been waiting a long time for this. That he's got some big plans. They involve the both of them. Truth being told, Ty probably isn't gonna like what's in store. But as he said in the past, they are in this together. Alright gang, so as we dive into this issue, with the rest of Tiger Division back at the headquarters, Lady Bright had had a conversation with Ty prior to him leaving, not knowing where he was going, but what she does know is that he was acting very odd. Pulling out one of her cards, it gives her a location. She enlarges this card with her power and she hops on it. This card is telling her that Ty went to the MTO building. As she takes off to investigate what is going on, we pick up with Min and Ty. Min, once upon a time, being the best friend to Ty. In their childhood, they pretty much ran a street gang together. Now, Ty had believed that Min had been dead for many, many years. But the truth is, years ago, he had faked his death. He took on a new name, and now MTO, this is his corporation. He built all of this, and it all started back in the day. Back when they were nothing more than a couple of kids with a few other individuals starting a street gang. He has built his empire, the one that Min and Ty together had planned to build. But this is what takes us back to 1978 in Seoul, South Korea. At this point, they're a little bit older. They have been working for a while to build up their organization. They have been running guns. They have been doing all kinds of stuff. 
And while they're not at the top of the food chain, they are definitely making their way up it. But as Ty and Min sit down with their crew, they discuss the next job that they are about to do. Some kind of project that has to do with the US government. Something is being created, being made with military grade materials. Believing that this stuff could easily be worth tens of thousands of dollars. They plan the heist. Outside the building later that evening, the crew gets ready to move in. Ty going in with men staying behind and being the lookouts. This crew is able to make their way inside the building. They distract the guards, they use the opportunity to get inside and they see some kind of giant machine. Not really sure what this is, it definitely looks expensive. As they get wrenches and screwdrivers, they start trying to dismantle this so that they can take it out in pieces. But we see Ty go over to a specific area, he's trying to do something, that is when the table latch grabs him. Not really sure what happened or what they just did, Ty finds himself stuck to this table with this giant weapon now activating and pointing directly at him. The alarms going off, the crew gets spooked. Every single one of them, they leave Ty behind, apologizing to him but not wanting to get caught themselves. They leave him behind and the guards, they come into the room, telling Ty to shut it down. There is nothing that he can do. He doesn't even understand how this thing had activated. Now finding himself in the crossfires of this weapon, we see it load up, tears coming down Ty's eyes. It hits him with a huge blast of energy. This is the moment that everyone believed Ty had died. After Ty's supposed death, there was a security camera that had caught Min. It had caught his face and they tried blaming him for everything. And so shortly after this, he devised a plan to fake his death. But what they did not know is that Ty was very much still alive. The next day in all that destruction, they carried out his body, transformed way more muscular than it ever was before, and now imbued with a brand new power set. This is all because of the Psylot Gym. That power was channeled into him. At the time, Ty had no idea that this is what gave him his power. In fact, Ty is learning right now, this is how he became who he is today. But Min has been doing great research on that moment. He has learned that that gym, it is in fact an Asgardian artifact. Loki had stashed it in Korea centuries ago, but he never returned for it. It had lied dormant in a museum until they identified it and took it as their own. This is when Ty goes ahead and he asks Min, if you knew all of this information, why did you wait so long to contact me? He waited because Min wasn't ready yet. This is when Lady Bright and the rest of Tiger Division, they are able to get comms inside of MTO. They are watching their surveillance. They are watching the conversation between Min and Ty, with Min letting us know that at first, he really didn't believe Ty's superhero act. This wasn't the Ty that he knew. He knew that it was a sham. He knew who Ty really was. Now Ty became a, a different person after he got his powers. After learning everything that he has, he knew what they were doing was wrong. He wanted to take a different path. But Min has set all of this up. As we see Ty being imprisoned in some kind of device, we are seeing that Min is activating this weapon and his intention is to take this power from Ty and give it to himself. Alright gang, we are picking up exactly where we left off. Ty is figuring out that he was lured here so that his powers could be stolen. Lady Bright on the outside observing all of this happening. The rest of Tiger Division watching through security cameras. And Min is saying that he cultivated relationships with the South Korean military and was able to get the designs for the original amplifier. The machine that was able to amplify the gym and give Ty his powers. Saying that he assembled it and with the help of a very powerful friend, he made adjustments so that it could drain all of the gym's power from one person and transfer it into another. This is when Lady Bright smashes in through the window. 
she tells men to let Ty go and she won't destroy him. Now this is where we get a little backstory on what happened after Ty got his powers. Because everybody else in Ty's crew believes that he left them behind. The way Ty sees it, they all left him behind. When he was stuck to that table and getting ready to get blasted with that energy, his entire crew, they left him. And so when the doctors told him that he should be dead, but asking if there is anybody to call, any friends or family, a few hours later we see his adoptive mother. The truth is, he has nobody else but her. Not knowing where to begin, but he knows that he has a lot of explaining to do. He thought he knew better. He thought he had found a family, but they all left him. In the most dire situation, they ran. This is when he accepted that they were not his family. And though he knows he walked out on her, there is no reason for her to take him back. She grabs his hand and she does just that. She forgave him without question because that is what real family does. They are there for you no matter what happens. Whether you're at death's door or discover you have super strength or you can suddenly start to fly. She was there when he started to discover his powers. She helped him learn to truly harness them. She grounded him. She also taught him something else. Going to the market later on after he has started to learn his powers just a little bit more. What we see, what they are observing, is one of his old crew members coming to one of the huts, one of the shops, and trying to get money out of them. Strong arming them for protection, saying that if you don't give us money, we are going to make sure something happens to your shop. She gives over every single last dollar that she has, and his adoptive mother telling Ty that this is your legacy, a world of fear and violence and abuse. The same people that had killed your parents during the war, they have the same legacy. It is a terrible cycle, but one that Ty has the opportunity to break. He has been given a rare gift, not speaking on his powers, but on his second chance. He has been gifted with another opportunity to do things right. The question is, what are you going to do with it? After that, he had committed himself to the helping of people. The more help that he did, the more he realized there was so much evil in the world. The more he helped, the more he realized all of the evil he had created in the world. They had stolen food meant for children, bribed business over owners to rip off working men and women. They had made people feel unsafe in their own homes. He recruited Tiger Division, hoping that they could make some kind of difference. But he was ashamed of his past, ashamed that they would see him as a false leader. How could he preach this mission when everything he has done was bad? But he lets men know that he has lost his way. That maybe back then you could have justified what we are doing to survive. But this is no longer about surviving. This is about greed and ambition. As Lady Bright gets ready to just lay the smack down on men, he presses a button and we see a suit start to build up around him. This suit looks a lot like freaking Nimrod. And so Min and Lady Bright, they begin to battle one another. With Min hitting the switch, we see that thing charge up and it starts to drain the energy out of Ty. Lady Bright unable to stop this from happening. With her also getting taken out of this fight by men. This is when men get smashed in the freaking face. A giant fist just coming and hitting him right across the chin. This sends him flying across the room. And we have the arrival of the rest of Tiger Division. But Min is telling them that they are all already too late. All of the power has been drained out of Ty. His powers are gone. They are all back in that gym. This is when all of the guards come into the room saying that there is an incoming threat. Not the ones that are in the room currently. There is a different threat, a foreign one. But Min's not concerned about this because as soon as he drains that power into himself, as soon as he transfers all of that power, he will become the new Superman of South Korea. 
but this is when there is a giant green explosion. A man comes floating in, letting them know that none of them are worthy to inherit the power of the gym. With such potential, it should only be in the hands of the one, the only, Victor Von Doom. Alright gang, so as we jump into the final issue, we are picking up with Doctor Doom arriving on scene. Min had just recently drained the power from Ty, putting all of that power back into the gym. That means the Superman of South Korea no longer has any powers. As soon as this energy signature went off, Doctor Doom got the notice, telling Min to now prepare him the device, cause Doctor Doom is about to take all of this power for himself. This is where Min says that Doctor Doom must be confused, because the gym's power has always been meant for him. Doctor Doom telling him that his assumptions and expectations are incorrect, that there is no way that he could survive this power transfer in his aged condition. Doctor Doom had told him that preparing the gym for human interaction was possible, and he has done so successfully. But now he can either join Doom and be rewarded generously, or he can die alongside everybody else, giving him the ultimatum of loyalty or death. And so Min and all of his forces, they turn on Tiger Division. This is where the fight gets fully underway. Tiger Division throwing everything they have. But we see that Tiger Division is slowly being taken down one by one. While our heroes do their best to fight off all these forces, Doctor Doom is simply too powerful. Lady Bright staying by the side of Ty. Ty lets her know that you need to get into this fight. You need to stop trying to protect me. That they are not going to hold long against Doctor Doom. Lady Bright may be the only thing to hold him off long enough. With Ty no longer being protected, that's where Min comes for him. He comes for him, and he puts him down into the ground. But with Ty getting back up to his feet, he lets Min know that he was right. That he hid from his past. He left his friend behind. He was ashamed of the things that he did. The crimes that they had committed. But when his friend had disappeared, a part of him was kind of relieved that he was gone. Because it made it easier to forget the life that he led. To let it all go. But now he knows that he was wrong. The past had made him who he is, and Min was such a very important part of that past. In fact, he was the best part. They were family. That is why he fights so hard now, because Tiger Division is his family. This puts Min at pause just for a moment, with Doctor Doom seeing this moment of weakness, telling him that if he can't finish the job, Doctor Doom will. With Doctor Doom coming in to take out Ty once and for all, we see Min sucker punch Doom, hitting him right in the solar plex, and he sends him flying backwards. Min telling him that he is not wanted here, and we see Min's forces turn on Doctor Doom. And so while all those forces now battle against Doom, they take this opportunity to get the operations fully into effect. They are able to reboot the energy grid, reverse the power transfer process. They have one shot at this, and they take it. They shoot that cannon with the gym inside directly at Ty. The amplifier not designed to hold this much compressed power for a second at a time. The circuits are overloading. We see it explode in their hand. And when the smoke clears, we see that Ty is having his powers back. This is where he tells Dr. Doom that it is time to leave. Doom seeing that the gym has been shattered. The power has been commandeered. There is nothing left for him here. But he reminds them that he never forgets those that have crossed him. Telling them that this is not over. At least for today, the battle has been won. And Ty has his powers back. That's what picks us up the next day. Right now, there is no sign of Min. He seems to have disappeared after everything went down with Doom. He left his company, and he left everybody else behind. Now, obviously, Tiger Division is a little jambled up now, because Ty 
He just wasn't honest, and he knows this. He stands up and tells them that he has something to say, that he knows that he hasn't been himself lately, that he hasn't been much of a teammate or much of a leader. He always thought being a leader meant keeping your focus on the future. He thought that is what he was doing, but it turns out he was just running towards the future and running away from the past. But now he is done running. This is when he goes to tell them the entire story of what made him the person that he is today. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. This will be bringing this limited series to a close, and man, am I wanting more. You know, I have talked about it from the very beginning. I love Tiger Division. I love the South Korean heroes. They really are absolutely fantastic. I was hoping that Luna Snow would play a bigger part in all of this, but she's been she's been playing more of like a administrator kind of aspect. She's the leader, she's the one that talks to the governments, does the paperwork, which is unfortunate because Luna Snow is one heck of a player in the game. But when you have somebody like Ty that is leading the team, someone as powerful as him, and then having Lady Bright and all the others, you don't necessarily need Luna Snow on this team. But what I got from this limited series was really the history of Ty. A deeper understanding of where he came from and how he got his powers. And while he tried to run from them, he tried to run from his past. Tried to run from all his past mistakes. They had finally caught up with him. But now he has faced them. Alongside Tiger Division, this will only make them stronger. It will only make them a more formidable team. It will make the bonds grow closer. And so with this story closing out, I think they did an absolutely phenomenal job of giving us a story from the beginning to the end, letting us know where Ty comes from and really where the team stands moving forward. I for one am very excited to see what the future holds for our Tiger division. But let me know your thoughts, let me know your theories. If you would like to get completely caught up on everything going on with this story, be sure to check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It will get you completely caught up on everything going on with Tiger Division. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by joining the channel membership. Much like Patreon, having multiple different tiers, from $1 to $50, from loyalty badges to free comics every single month. Not only does this help out the channel tremendously, but you are getting tons of perks in the process. If you are unable to do that, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and with that being said, until the next breakdown.